I am going to be installing plus nuts all over the van. These will offer a much better hold onto the sheet metal. These are designed for the places where you need to screw something in, but you can't reach behind it to screw on a nut. So I'm gonna be putting these things everywhere to make all of my bolts more secure. I'm using half inch ones. I don't know that that's necessarily the size that you want to go with, but you know, people do this with just sheet screws. So the fact that I'm making this a little more stable is probably even better. And they already fit into the holes that are already in the van. So to demonstrate what this does to the plus nut and the idea behind the plus nut. So I'm going to put this plus nut onto the tool all the way down. Use my chest for a little bit of leverage to start with. But look what's starting to happen to the nut as I push down. See what that's doing? It's creating a plus and that part goes behind the sheet metal. Now this is why I ended up choosing the plus nut over the riv nut because my understanding of the riv nut is that the crimping does not come out this far. So I feel like this is going to be a lot more sturdy and really grabs onto the back of the metal. Look how much it's sticking out from the very front. If you remember, this is one that's not yet crimped. So the very first thing that you'll do right out of the box is you'll most likely have to change this end piece to match whatever size riv nuts or plus nuts that you have. It comes with all kinds of these little fittings and they say on there what the size is. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this little nut here. I'm going to pull this off and you always want to keep this and this together. So now I'm going to pull down this little sleeve just with my finger, I can screw this out. Now I grab the one that I need. I am going to start off uh, by pulling that little sleeve down again, just with my finger. And I'm going to start screwing that in. And then I'm just gonna release the sleeve. Now I take the little nut, I drop that down and screw that in. Now when you put on the plus nut, you wanna pull the handles all the way out first. Then you wanna thread this down on top I'm just going to stick the whole thing and then clamp it down. Now, since it has crimped a little bit, the plus nut is a little bit shorter, so I can actually get this a little bit further down. Now I'm going to crimp it again. And if you notice, I can actually let go of this. So it looks like for that one, I did have to tighten it three times. And that last one was a little bit tougher, um, but that is in there and ready to go. So I'm going to do this all over the place. I'm going to do it in the ceiling. I'm going to do it where the upper cabinets are going. Basically everywhere that I'm going to be putting a furring strip, I'm going to put these plus nuts. <sighs> okay. So I want to show you a close up of this. I don't know if you can tell, but there's like a little like Allen wrench port, <laughs> which is what I'm going to call it, that turns with this knob. I got super excited because I thought, oh, I can just put an Allen wrench bit on my drill and then just really fast. But Unfortunately, I don't have a bit that fits this. Oh man, if I had an Allen wrench drill bit, this part would be so fast. This is literally what's taking up most of my time. There's one more thing that I wanna show you that might make it easier for you, especially if you struggle with upper body strength. You don't have to have the handles all the way out or thread this all the way down if you need a little bit more leverage. See where how much gap there is? I can move the handles to here and pushing like that gives me a lot better leverage. Instead of having to push from way out here, I'm able to just squeeze together. Now, obviously that is not gonna be tight enough. So now I just screw this in a little more. Now, if you notice the nut like spinning with you while you're doing this, just push in, like push in that way while you're tightening and that helps a lot. And then just kind of do it a little bit at a time and just don't tighten this all the way and get a little bit more. Do it again, get a little bit more. That does honestly make it a whole lot easier. Once again, it's a little bit more tedious, more steps, but a ton easier. And then I just keep doing it until it gets too tough. It does say in here that you don't wanna like crazy over tighten it. In fact, if you're starting to over tighten it a little bit, you'll feel and even see the uh, metal starting to kind of bow and bend a little bit. Now I have decided to do a combination of these plus nuts and the woodle, woodle, <laughs> wood to metal screws. 
because I think these will give me the security that I need, whereas the wood to metal screws will be a lot easier to put in because I won't have to line up the holes. So I think the combination will give me a nice tight hold without driving me too crazy. <laughs> it looks like I have used exactly 65 plus nuts throughout the build. And I still have a bunch left over in case I wanna add some more later. I have all of these done. Again, it took me about two and a half hours, maybe almost three, but I am now ready to start doing my furring strips. I have my first furring strip up. So I'll tell you what, those nuts really work well. I'm still gonna experiment a little bit because not gonna lie, that one was really difficult. I, you know, put in all of those plus nuts. So now it really matters where I pre-drill for the bolts. Aligning that was a little bit harder than I expected, but hopefully after I practice a couple more, maybe I'll have some better tips for you when you try this. The wood literally just split. I was putting it in and it just snapped. So while this wood is flexible, a little, I also have to make sure there's no like cracks in it going around the side. I had cut this one as I was putting it up. I could hear the sound of wood splitting and I could see right there that there was actually already a split in it. So whenever I go get more of this stuff, the thing I'll need to pay attention to are little cracks like this. But at least I will say my measuring method is working out. So what I'm basically doing, I'm cutting my piece down and then I'm kind of holding it up in place and then marking the center of each bolt. Once I make the marks, then I measure between the centers of the bolts and then I measure between my two markings, making sure that it's exactly the same. And then I make a little line going down where that measurement is. I also wanna make sure that my holes are completely in the center. So I'm measuring across this way and then finding the exact halfway mark and making another line. So now I have these plus signs where I know to put the bolt. That part is working. Now I just gotta figure out how to not ruin this wood. All right, so before I measure and cut this piece, I'm gonna check it to see if there's anywhere that looks like it is going to crack. And then the other thing I can maybe do is just cut it like a little bit shorter than the others so that hopefully it's not bending quite as much. Maybe they don't need to be that long and going all the way across because there's definitely a part um, on the ceiling where the ribs like come down a little bit further at the end. So maybe that's what's putting so much stress on the board. So I think I'm gonna do that too. This is one that looked like it was starting to crack um, and I can see where the crack is. So I'm gonna cut this one a little shorter. I'm gonna push it up and see if it bends a little bit less. And then if it does, then that's how I'll cut these next pieces. I was doing 56 and a quarter. I'm gonna do 51 and a quarter. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this board that is already cracked, I don't hear the sound of cracking. I wonder if I should take these down and cut off each end and put it back up that will take some pressure off the boards in the future. Yeah, I'm gonna take these down. I'm gonna change my measurement from 56 and a quarter to 51 and a quarter and put these bad boys back up. Then I'll start on this one again. So now that I know for sure that that works, which is amazing, now I can actually show you what I've learned. I'm still gonna check for any signs of cracking or splitting on both sides. So I'm now gonna measure out my 51 and a quarter inches. So now I have my line. I'm gonna get this kind of as centered as possible. Make a rough note of where that one is. Now that I have my rough markings, um, I wanna measure in between these two. And then I'll kind of check my work by measuring on here. I do try to make sure that I have this in the middle and that as best as possible, I have this pressed against the curve. It's one notch above 15. I can make my official marking going down. To find the center, I need one plus one, two, three. Now, I'm 
want to use that to make my line going across. Right in the center here is where I'm going to cut my holes. Now, one thing I will say that has been the most tricky is actually screwing this in the center. Oh, I think that's the best I've done so far. Now I need to use my countersink bit, which I immediately love this thing. So I'm just gonna barely get these started in here. So now it's time to get this up there. Just when I think I've got it. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use another size up on the drill bit to create my pilot hole so that hopefully the screw or the bolt doesn't grab the wood, it just grabs the metal behind it. Now for heaven's sake, this is gonna work. What? What's happening? All right, let's try again. Hopefully I didn't make those too big by doing that. So this lets the screw turn a little bit, but still definitely secure on the top. Here we go. This is gonna work. Right? Right. Okay. It's working. <laughs> Yay! Okay, that took way too long. I think I've got it now. So hopefully these next two go really quickly. So I got my last two pieces cut, measured, pre-drilled. Let's see if my method actually works, making the holes like slightly bigger so that this just passes through. That may be all I ever needed from the beginning. Line that up as best as possible. I wish I could see a little better. There we go. a lot more difficult when I'm doing the longer ones that have a lot more of these things because <laughs> at least right now I can put one in and then kind of make some adjustments but I think that when I do the ones going all the way across multiple bolts might be a little bit more difficult but at least I have my system down pretty well so this is I think going pretty awesome yes! Yes! Woo! I have all my ceiling furring strips done. Yay! Oh, that's so exciting. So I'm gonna take some measurements. I need to see how long this is. Pick up some supplies and uh, get right back at this. Ah, I'm spilling class notes everywhere. Hey, I just learned an easier way to get this unthreaded. Right? Am I stupid? I'm stupid, huh? That doesn't work. 